Here now to discuss the impact of this looming grand jury decision, St. Louis Police Chief Sam Dotson and St. Louis County Police Chief John Belmar. Guys, good to see you. Um, Chief Dotson, let me, let me start with you. We've got a video of all of these stores that are all boarded up. I mean, is that, is, is that generally the feeling of the people in this community that all hell is going to break, break loose out after this decision? No, it's not. And, and unfortunately, those are the images that people see. And, and the impacted yeah, area on the West every Forest one. Corridor... It's every store. It, 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 it is relatively small when you look at the whole metropolitan area. Hey, it's unfortunate for that community that they feel that they have to do that, that they've been victimized. And the small businesses that are there, uh, Chief Belmar and I talked to them, they're hanging on by a thread, and they really can't afford this. So it, it's the perpetuation of the fear of the, the cycle of violence that we're trying to stop. Chief Belmar, um, activists were caught on tape. It was uh, Gateway Pundit that first reported this. And they have this Lisa Fithahan um, holding training sessions of activists, some 600 of them, many of, many of them not even from Ferguson. And one of the trainees were telling the attendees that, well, I don't think we need to be on West uh, Florissant. Is that how you say the name? I want to advocate to go on south because the people on the south don't look like me, the people in the west look like me and they're with it. And then they have on top of that, there's another group at Ferguson, a protest group, putting out a list of targets. And the list is three pages long, single spaced, including, you know, Anheuser-Busch and Boeing and hospitals and airports and, and other businesses. How do you handle that? Isn't that, is, are threats like that, are they legal? Well, you know, uh, it, it, I guess it depends what they're threatening to do. And I'll tell you something unique about August was that it was really just in about a six, seven, eight block area. We don't anticipate that at that, that this time. In fact, we've spent most of the last three months on South Florissant Road in front of the Ferguson Police Station. That's really where a lot of the energy has moved to. As far as the threats on the uh, big companies that we have out there, I think Chief Dodson's right. Really, our small businesses are probably going to be more affected than anybody else. All right, you're doubtful that something is going to happen, but these, these agitators, these protesters are out there predicting that, in fact, they will react. Let me, let me ask you this. Are you hearing the leaks from the grand jury as I am, that there were as many as six eyewitnesses? The, the media makes us black versus white, unarmed black teen, um, black, uh, white officer, that there are black eyewitnesses that corroborate Darren Wilson's story. Have you heard that? No, we really haven't paid a lot of attention to the leaks coming out of the grand jury because, frankly, that's not our, not our place. I haven't really asked the prosecuting attorney about that at all. We talk a little bit about timing from time to time, but uh, I, I really can't uh, give any credence to those leaks. Is there and, any, Sean, and that's really part of the, that's part of the problem in the community is that it has a polarizing effect. And so the grand jury has to go through their process. And, and what we're doing is meeting with those organizers and really trying to work out those lines of communication, build those bridges to keep that violence from happening that you're talking about. Well, now, it's well, fair that, to say there's a lot leaks, of anxiety, I'll tell you that. Well, do you have any the, you, an answer to the question of timing? We keep hearing maybe Friday, maybe Monday, maybe after Thanksgiving. What do you, what do you, what do you know? You, you know, we really don't because it's going to be up to the grand jury finally to deliberate and decide when they're going to release this. We don't know how long that's going to take. You know, we expected this as early as October, then it turned into the 1st of November, and now here we are. So we anticipate that it's around the corner, but we can't say exactly when. There are two diametrically opposed stories here. If the one that Michael Brown actually attempted to get the gun of Officer Darren Wilson and tried to get it, and then also ran towards him. If that story turned out to be true, then wouldn't it be possible that the President of the United States of America sent three White House representatives to the funeral of a man that potentially was trying to kill a cop? Uh, and we're going to wait for the grand jury to come out with but all that's of that a because it's all speculation right now. But, but I, I think anything's a possibility right now. It, well, let me ask as an officer when Eric Holder made his comments or the president makes his comments before the United Nations and you know, we give the benefit of the doubt and the belief that people are innocent to proven guilty to other criminals, doesn't Officer Wilson deserve that same right, gentlemen? Well, he certainly does, but I'll say this. This case, for some reason, has garnered a tremendous amount of uh, attention. And I know that's, that's an understatement, but um, it, it seemed to really catch uh, certainly the uh, St. Louis metropolitan area, Ferguson, and now the nation. And there has been a lot of commentary on about it. There's been a lot of commentary from a lot of high-level positions regarding it. 
But frankly, we're not going to really know that until the grand jury returns to exactly uh, who called this, who didn't, you don't uh, think and the what president, ramifications may lead from there. Do you think the president was wrong to speak out as he did and meet with Ferguson activists and Al Sharpton uh, and say, stay the course? Do you find that inappropriate? Or, or the, having uh, Eric Holder compare what happened here to Emmett Till? I think, Sean, really what we're trying to do in our community, and I hear those things, are to cause people to be calm. Comments that, that work the crowd up and, and polarize don't help us at all. So yeah. that's why we meet with organizers. That's why, I, and I hear what you're saying, we're trying to bring calm to our community. Listen, I, I, I pray for everybody in the city. I hope there's calm. But I think the president and Eric Holder and Al Sharpton, I think they've been terribly irresponsible. Whether, you're say it or, whether you will say it or not, that's one thing. I will say it. And I think they have created an expectation in the minds of people in the community to expect a certain outcome that may not, very, that may not come here. That's a problem when the president of the United States does that. Uh, any comment at all, or should I let it go? Well, listen, certainly there's room for due process. We understand that. We're looking forward to that, regardless of uh, the grand jury decision. That's certainly in their purview. Uh, listen, we have a plan no matter what moving forward. I think life, uh, preservation of life is number one. These small businesses, they, they matter. Ferguson and the city of St. Louis can't, can't afford to be torn apart. And yet we do have the balancing act of protecting everybody's uh, uh, constitutional right. We're going to do that right. regardless of the outcome. Guys, and and regardless you... of who says what. That's our, that's our job. Regardless of who says what, I will, we have to I, listen, keep our community safe. I hope safe. the people, the community, stay calm and are not instigated by outside agitators. Let me put it that way. Thank you both for being with us. Wish you the best. Thanks, Thank Sean. You. Thank you.